Today we're going to be taking a look at Kodu Game Lab, which is a software made by Microsoft that allows you to design and program your own 3D games. When you open up Kodu, this is the screen you're going to see. We're going to start by making a new world, so I'm just going to come up to the menu here and click on New World. Once I do that, it's going to load me into a new area. When you first open up a new world, it's going to start you off with a square piece of land right here. And this is not a lot of real estate to work with, so I'm not going to have a lot of room for my characters to move around. So the first thing we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to add more land to the game. To do that, I'm going to look at the bottom bar right here where I have all my different tools. And I'm going to be selecting the one that looks like a paintbrush. Once I do that, then I'll see I have a square that appears on the screen. And the size of your square may be different than the one I have now. To adjust the size of the square, you can use the left and right arrow keys. So if I click on the left one, it'll make the box smaller. And if I click on the right one, then it'll make the box bigger. And what this is going to do, anytime I click on the screen, it's going to add more land to my field here. So let's go ahead and do this a couple times. You can either click on different parts of the screen, or you can click and drag your mouse to add more land at once. Okay, so that's looking better. So I have a lot more area for my characters to move now. The next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and add a character into the game. To do that, I'm going to look back on my toolbar at the bottom, and I'm going to click on the Object tool. After I click on the Object tool, then I'm going to click anywhere on the field, and wherever I click, that's where it's going to add a character. So let's go ahead and add a character over here. So I'm going to click with the left mouse. It'll open up the Object menu, and then I can select whichever object I want to add to the game. To start off, let's go ahead and select a Kodu. So Kodu is up at the top. I'm going to go ahead and click on him. Once I do that, then I have inserted a Kodu into my game. After you add an object into the game, if you want to program it, all you have to do is right click on the object, and then at the very top, click on Program. And this will open up the programming menu. The programming menu is divided into two sections, a Win section and a Do section. So you can think of the win section like different events. So this is going to be different things like when I press different arrow keys, when I maybe press space bar, and different things like that. So the first program we're going to write is just to get our character moving. So under the win section, I'm going to say something like when the different arrow keys are pressed. Then under the do section, this is the action part of it. So when my arrow keys are pressed, what I want the object to do is move. So the best way to code things is kind of think about what you want to do beforehand and then try to find the matching objects in the menus. So on my head, I'm thinking for the win section, I need to try to find something that resembles arrow keys. And then for the do or the action section, I need to find something that says something similar to move or movement. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So to open up the menu, you're going to press on the plus sign. Okay, so I'm looking around. And I see that keyboard is probably the closest option I have, so I'm going to click on keyboard. And right now, it's just looking for the whole keyboard. I can make this more specific by pressing this plus sign. And so on the keyboard, I'm going to be using the arrow keys, so I'm going to click on arrow keys. After that, I'm going to look under the do section. And whenever the arrow keys are pressed, what I want it to do is have the character move. So Kodu is nice, it has a button right up here that says move. And then just like before, I can make this more specific by either saying move quickly or move slowly. Let's go ahead and have it move quickly. And that's really all I have to do for this programming part. So under the win section, I have the keyboard and then more specifically the arrow keys. When those arrow keys are pressed, then it's going to move the character quickly. And I don't have to specify each key by itself. So for example, I don't have to say when the up arrow is pressed, move the character forward. It automatically does that for me. So let's go ahead and test this code. So what I'm going to do first to close out of the programming menu is press the escape key on my keyboard. And then to run my program, I'm going to look down on my tools bar and find the triangle, the play button, and click on it. Okay, so now that my program is running, I can test it out by trying the different arrow keys. So I'm first going to try the forward key. And I see that my character is moving forward. I'll try the right. So he's turning. 
Let's do a left turn and backwards. Okay, great. So this part is working. So let's go ahead and go on and see what else we can do with this. Okay, to stop the code from running, you're going to press the escape key. Once you're back where the screen looks like this, let's go ahead and add another object into the game. So we're going to go back to our object tool. We're going to click somewhere on the screen. And this time, let's add an apple. So now that we have our Kodu and our apple, let's go back and add some more program to the Kodu. So I'm going to right click and then click on program. Down here under the win section, what I'm going to have it do is whenever the Kodu bumps the apple, then I'm going to have the Kodu pick up the apple. So for the win section, I'm looking for when the Kodu and the apple are bump each other. For the action or the do section, I want the Kodu to pick up the apple. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can figure this out. So under the win section, I see down at the bottom here, there's a button that says bumped. I need to be more specific. So I'm going to say what it bumps into. So when Kodu bumps into, and then under objects, the apple, what I want Kodu to do is to under holding here, I want it to grab. So whenever the Kodu bumps into the apple, then what it's going to do, it's going to grab the apple. Let's go and press escape and then the play button and see if this works. So I still have the movement controls from before. So if I move my Kodu around and then try to run into the apple. When the Kodu bumps into the apple, we can see that it picks it up. Okay, let's go and press escape and go back to the editing menu. Now let's go ahead and look at how we can modify the look of our game a little bit more. So before we learned how we can add more land to the game by clicking on the paintbrush, some of the other options, if you click on the one right next to the paintbrush, this is how you can create hills or valleys. So if I click on this one, and then I don't want this whole area to be raised, so I'm just going to use my left arrow key to make this area a little bit smaller. And then I can click and hold to raise the land. Okay, so I can do something like that. Let's take a look at the button right next to this one. So this is how I can smooth or level the field. So if I go back over this area right here and click on it, then it just tries to make this hill a little bit more flat on top. Okay, if I want a hill that's a little bit more spiky, I can use this tool right here. And if I use this one, then it just makes a little bit more sharper hills. I can also add water into the game. But if you try to add water right away, so let's say I click on the water tool and then click on the ground, it adds water everywhere on the field. So to prevent this from happening, and the way that you can get rid of the water is just by right clicking. So left click adds water, and then right click deletes it. So what I need for the water is somewhere for it to be contained, like a pool or something like that. So I can create that by using the hill tool. And let's go ahead and just make a little area. And then if you ever need to change your view, you can click on the hand here. And then you can drag the camera around so I can see the other side better. Okay, so I'm almost done. I just need to close up this area right here. So I'm going to go back to the hill tool and just finish it up. Okay, and back to the hand so I can get a, a better top view. And you can see I have this little area that's contained. And now if I try to put the water in there, then it stays just in this area. If I try to go too high, however, so if I keep adding water, then eventually it spills out and covers the whole area again. If I do make this mistake, all I have to do is right click and then it'll delete some of the water. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do for this video, let's go ahead and add some decoration objects. To do that, I'm going to click on the object tool. And before I do that, let's go ahead and just fix the camera view so I have a better view of my area. And I see that I accidentally added water but easy fix, I can just right click until it goes back to normal. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the hand so I can change my view. I'm gonna drag over to the center, just like that. So now I'm gonna click on the object tool and then click somewhere on the land. And let's go ahead and add some trees. So I can click on trees. I have a couple different options. This would be like the biggest tree. There's a skinny tree and then kind of medium sized trees. So let's go ahead and add a nice big tree over here. 
Let's go back to the object tool. Let's add some rocks over here. And if I want more rocks than just this one, instead of having to go back into the object menu, I can just click on this one, right click, and then press copy. And then on the field, I'll have to paste. So to do that, you just go to copy, which copies the object. And then I can click somewhere else and press paste. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and run our final game now. So what I have, I have some hills over here. I have a pool. I added a couple decoration objects. So I have a tree and a couple rocks. And then I have my apple. So I have it right now where the Kodu can move around the screen. And then whenever it bumps into the apple, the Kodu picks it up. So let's go ahead and run our program and see what our final result is. Okay, so I'm in the game. Another thing I didn't mention yet, when you're in the game, you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. So I can go all the way to first person if I want to. And then if I want to zoom out, I just move the scroll wheel backwards. Okay, let's use the arrow keys to try to bump into the apple. Okay, so I'm getting closer. And the controls take a little bit of getting used to when you first do it. So I'm getting closer and I bumped into it and it picks it up. That's going to be it for this video. Later on, we'll be taking a look at more features of Kodu and seeing how we can make more complex games.